This is the Waterford Historical Society Oral History Project interview of Fred Bullock on November 1st, 2016 at the home of Fred um, on Lower Waterford Road. The interviewers are David Morrison, Donna Heath, and Lynn Troy. Well, Liz has given us a little worksheet here, Fred, and I guess if you'd like to know when you were born, your place of birth, and a little bit about your, your early family. Well, I was <coughs> born here in Waterford, uh, right over in the old house over there, back in June 4th, 1925. So you were actually born in that house? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, not the one now, but the old, pl uh, t the old house. Yeah, where Frank is now. No, we'll, we'll right, right, right over where, here. Yes, I understand now, where yeah. your mother and father lived yeah. later on. Yeah. Did they own the house then? Or? Uh, yeah, they bought it from the, uh, my grandmother, or my father's mother. Uh, uh, my father's grandfather, Henry Davison, owned that place. And my grandfather Bullock and grandmother Bullock uh, came back from Lindenville and uh, lived there with him. He was getting kind of old. And then uh, a few years later they bought where Frank is over there. And uh, so uh, then, then my father bought the place from them back after he got married, I think, back in the twenties. Oh, okay. And so we know you're the oldest of the family of eight. Uh, you want to tell us a little bit about growing up in a household that big? <laughs> oh, it was lots of fun. <laughs> uh, no, it was, well, it was, you know, it was back during the Depression. It was pretty tough going back in. Uh, I was born 25, so I didn't start school until, was it 31? Or, yeah, 1931, I think, started graduate school. And, uh, you had to walk. Yep. Yeah. I walked a mile and a half to get to school and my graded school, and then I walked three miles to get to school in Littleton. That's not bad for a ten-mile trip. <laughs> <laughs> well, I rode on the bus, but <laughs> yeah, we'll get to, we'll get to that. Uh, memories of your brothers and sisters? Well. Uh, I guess maybe you'd say we had lots of memories on uh, eight kids, <laughs> a lot of squabbles, and, but no, we managed to survive. Uh, so tell us a little bit about the one-room school up in the village there. Uh, I understand it was heated by wood back then. Yeah. Uh, I don't know that whether they changed over to oil before I graduated from there or not, but it was soon after that. Oh, okay. It yeah. was kerosene when I, yeah. when I got there, but and, uh, quite a gap between you and me. No, I think uh, Raymond Morrison supplied all the wood. And, uh, so. Do you remember when they took the sheds down? I think the sh woodshed was still there when I first started school, but... It disappeared at some point. Well, they enlarged that schoolyard and took more out of the field up in back of it, you know. When I went to school there from the shed, it was a stone wall there and uh, lilac trees. Okay, and they didn't know that, Fred. That's good you to know. You didn't? No, because uh, it's always been the way it is now. Oh no, that is uh, right up 
uh, from over there, you know, where you go on the road, uh, that was a, a stone a stone wall. wall. It was uh, all covered with lilacs. And the kids would play up in there, you know, and all that stuff. So where, where did you play baseball and stuff like that if the school yard well, was that small? Up, up well, you, uh, you didn't hit it so far, you know. <laughs> <laughs> No, it was, they changed that two or three times before they really did the job on it, then. so. Uh, do you remember all your grandparents? Uh, were they yeah. also alive? Okay. Yeah, my uh, grandfather Kirkpatrick uh, died in uh, 1935, I think, and my grandmother Kirkpatrick lived to be up around 90, and uh, my grandmother Bullock lived to be 90 years old, and, uh, but Grandpa Bullock, he, uh, I was only about five months old when he died, so that was back in 1925. Now, I never knew your father, but when did he...? Uh, uh, he died uh, 53. Okay, I was here, but I just didn't know him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, tell us about your dad. Well, <coughs> he uh, went to agricultural school up Lindenville, back around 1916 or so. Was that part of what's L.I. now, or...? Oh no, that uh, that was altogether different up there then. It was more or less, uh, well, what was the names of the rich people that, uh, I know it, but I can't think of it. Uh, Vale or Darling? Yeah, probably was, uh, no, I want Darling, uh, but these were... Where the college is now, maybe then? Uh, Linda State? No. Because that was Vale Hill. And well, uh, he lived up there. Okay. He had, uh, there was a mansion up there. And, uh, uh, no, uh, of course, uh, he was there quite a while before Brown was, had all that, East Burke and the mansion up on the mountain there and all. So, uh, I don't know if I can tell you much about the, uh, but uh, I know uh, uh, y your uncle Robert's father. Mervyn. Yeah, he went up there too. I guess that's where he got into doing carpenter work. Oh, so it was a, a trade, uh, a trade school beyond high school. Oh yeah, they uh, most anything that had to do with farming. And uh, so, I don't know whether my father went more than one year or not, but... So tell us about the Depression. You mentioned that you were very <laughs> small, of course, and some of the family yeah. wasn't even here then. Well, it, uh, you had to make do and do without, you know. Is that how you father became a farmer was because of the depression or well <coughs> he bought the place and uh, uh, no a place to live and then he worked on the dam down there when they built the Comerford dam and uh, he raised a lot of pigs and got a lot of the uh, garbage from down there and fed the pigs out so now he didn't milk many cows till up in the thirties. And he didn't milk many cows then. It was only about seven or eight. Right. And then it, so. Now you only had what you could milk by hand. Yeah. yeah. I uh want to go to hand milk up. There's an act to it, isn't there? You know, my father could milk two cows to my one, you know. Well, 
that was high school. Uh, George mentioned that he'd gone to the academy, and you yeah. you went to Littleton. Um, and how was that decision made? Well, had no way to get to St. Johnsbury. And we could go up to the Minotan and get on the Littleton school bus, pay him a dollar a week, and ride. And Carlisle and Martha was going there, and I don't know, but Geneva and Thresser went over there, didn't they? I think so. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, no, uh, there wasn't much of any way to get to St. Johnsbury with us, so. And uh, I wasn't crazy about going anyway, but I, I went. Yeah, well, that's good. Uh, did you ever go to a tech school beyond uh, high school, or? No, no, I, that was impossible. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, this, the choice of school, turned out to be kind of a generational thing, because Mike, Sandy, and Larry went to Littleton also, and maybe kind of in your footsteps. Uh, you you did go to Littleton? Oh, you didn't. Well, Mike, your Mike, and Larry Powers, and Sandy Barrett all went to Littleton. Yeah, yeah. So I just... No, and, uh... So you just got across the river to where the mills were, and... Picked up the bus there. Oh, uh, right, right there on the Monroe Turn. Yeah. Uh, they uh, uh, came down and turned around on the turn that to go up to uh, Skinny Ridge. Yeah. That's as far as they went. Okay. Yeah, well, uh, the line is down by the mower. Uh, uh, well, uh, it's getting where I can't remember names. Uh, Oh, you know, down in Monroe there, yeah, well, uh, the, Wards. Near the Stanton Road there. Uh, the town line is just this side of the Ward farm there, you know, yeah. and so, but there wasn't anybody down there that went, so they turned around over here. Okay. And uh, then we usually, sometimes he was up there when he went down to, and sometimes he was warned, well, and so, uh, where did you meet uh, Ruth? Was she a local girl or? No. Uh, she was from everywhere. She started out in Waterville, Vermont. And she was around Greensboro. Uh, up in Glover. Okay. East Burke. St. Johnsbury, <coughs> for some sick. And when I met her, she was uh, living up in West End along Joe's Pond there at the Ashcraft Place. Okay. No, uh, Jerry's girlfriend got us to, together. Okay. Yeah, and where did you live here locally before you started this house? Well, I lived up at the foot of uh, where you go up to Willard's, uh, up by Elmer Reeds. Right, I remember. That's my first memory of Mike. Was, you were yeah. renting there. We was there for about a year. And. Uh, Would you live before that? Cause Mike would have been four or five then. My early oh, story. well, I, uh, I worked down the East Rye Gate on the Kitchell farm for. Six, about six years, uh, after, right after we was married. So uh, we was down, uh, yeah, he and Linda and uh, Darlene was born down there. Now, is this the Kitchell farm up on the hill? No, right there on the uh, Long Flat. Oh, that Kitchell farm, yes. Yeah. Sorry. No, uh, that, I, I didn't have nothing to do with up there. I, no, it was, uh, when I went to work down the East Highgate there, uh, I think there was about five of us working there. And then there was about three of us when I left. But, uh, no, I... Uh, so, uh, 
So when you were living at the Whaley place, were you working at the mill, or ah, How did you work at the mill? I was cutting pulp upon Kirby Mountain. Okay. And then uh, in the spring, I went to work for Andy Paulson over there. And then I went to work for Alton Purina in the fall, October, down to October 9th. Um, what year? Well, <laughs> you get me. That was, uh, Perina, a new company to town, and of course it was always there in my growing up. They've always been there, but they had an old mill up on in the, in the village of St. Johnsbury. Over on Mill Street, probably. They well, it's uh, up next to Concord Avenue, way across the bridge on the railroad street. Right, right. Uh, that big building down in there. No, they was building that. Uh, no. What were you was I married him? Well, I don't know. Uh, my my mind ain't that good. Forty six maybe. Uh, Mike is Mike is sixty nine. Forty nine. I was born in forty six, so you, you might have been married in forty six. He'd been no, forty seven. Probably so forty five. Forty five. Okay. No, I never worked in the old mill. They, they built that right after World War II, uh, the, the new mill down there by the river, you know. And uh, no, uh, no, when I went to work for Kitchell, they was just building that building. Minchell and a lot of the other fellows worked on it, you know. But that was all solid concrete and steel. And, uh, but this is Bill Mitchell, that yeah, married Betty Barrett, yeah. yeah. We were talking with George about refrigeration, and we got on to the, the ice house uh, <laughs> subject there. Was, and I remember an ice house along the river here somewhere, one of these places, and it was probably uh, well, they all had them, they all had them, uh, Raymond and Ernest, uh, maybe it's Raymond's, I remember. I was kind of curious about the cutting of ice. Of course, from the point you were really small, the dam was flooded here, so you had a calm, yeah. a calm reservoir. But it was did they cut it on private ponds, or did they cut it off the river? They cut it off the river down here. Some of the ice got about that thick. So did did anybody kind of? Go down and sweep the snow off the area they wanted to freeze, so it would freeze. Well, they, they, they did when to. they did when they wanted to cut the ice, uh, but uh, no, that uh, long February, uh, ice gets pretty thick. Yeah. Did you get involved in cutting ice? Oh yeah, yeah, uh, uh, that's a lot of fun. Stand there and pull everything up in there. <laughs> that was like a big. A big oh, a, it, it's a big saw, probably about six feet long, and big teeth in it that long, you know. And you uh, had to cut a hole, and you, you started cutting. No, it, it was a job, believe me. Two people? Hmm? Two people cutting it this together? Oh, no, no. You just, uh, uh, no, the saw went right down into the water. Oh. And, uh, no, it was just a one man job. But you probably had a crew to get it all out of there. Well, my father and Uncle Charlie and Arthur helped some, and it, uh, yeah, it was a, it was a job. Yeah. But, was it Arthur uh, your uncle or Arthur my father? He might have helped Raymond, I don't know. Oh, okay. Usually it was my father and uh, Uncle Charlie and Uncle Arthur and, uh, Roy Hemingway, but my father did most of the cutting. And, uh, was there an act to that too? Uh, yeah. And there was an act to milking. So. No, you up and down like that. 
how big a just because of the weight consideration, how big a block could you cut? And well, you only cut it, cut, it, uh, cut it about that square, and if the ice might be anywhere from that thick up to that thick. A two foot square and uh, how deep it was. Maybe eighteen, 18 inches. inches yeah. Yeah. And, and maybe two feet thick. And you had, I've seen some kind of tongs. You, that's yeah. You, yeah. You had to get a hold of ice with your hands. Uh -huh. Pretty hard to get a hold of ice with your hands. It's oh yeah, no, you. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, usually, if you're going to pick up ice, you'd have a man on each side with your tongs and bite into it. It'd be down near the bottom, and you could pick it up. But and then you had planks, uh, kind of a slide, like you could slide the ice right up on into a bobsled. On about, yeah, you wouldn't have had a cats out in the winter much because mm. all the cats were high, so you, you put it on a sled. I don't know. I don't think it's anything as uh, uh, And uh, my father did most of the cutting and on kelp thumb and it, uh, no, uh, a lot of them bought ice. How somebody else did the cut. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All over to St. John's, been up Lindenville, and they might have cut ice over on Pattonville there. It's all on the water now, you know. Um, where was the ice house here at this farm? Well, my father built one. It was right behind the, the milk house. Uh, right on the wall that uh, goes down towards the river. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, I can remember when they built that. Did you have any particular memories of some of the neighbors up and down the Lower Waterford Road here? Well, you know one of them. <laughs> well, I, I know some of them. That's what worked before. Well, uh, uh, most of the one we remembered was Marlowe Persons. Okay, I wasn't even thinking. I know you were chuckling. I don't uh, wasn't thinking about Milo. Yeah, s some memories of Milo. Well, I don't know. I want too many good memories. Uh, his cattle run all over the country. <laughs> yeah, he, Milo yeah. was a piece of work. Yeah. How about up towards the village? No, uh, everybody up through here got along pretty good. Yeah, but oh, some of us kids had our squabbles, I guess. But all part of growing up. How <laughs> <laughs> uh, about Ernest, Ernest and Stella? Uh, that was an older generation. Yeah. No. Did you ever work for Ernest? Or? Yeah, I worked one uh, summer for him. Yeah. Uh, Got plastered with poison ivy. <laughs> there is a lot on that farm. Yeah. So Ernest never uh, went tractor, so that was all. No, it's all horse, all horse. Uh, horse and hand, hand mowing and all that stuff, you know. Do you ever have to do much hand mowing with a scythe? Oh yeah, gosh, I should did a lot of it. Yeah. Dad always called that the misery hook. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, of course, it was pretty misery up there, and it's because it was about three quarters of poison ivy. And a lot of stone. Yeah. No, I never, I, of course, poison ivy didn't bother any so <laughs> Man, it, it plastered me. Yeah, I was all over that place when Kenny was there, and I never got it, so I, well, you're I lucky. hope I'm not allergic, but it may show up someday. No, if you went down through there and didn't get it, you uh, uh, don't have it. Uh, but your father had poison ivy, didn't he, and Raymond? I, well, I don't know about Raymond. I think that Dad might have had yeah, it. Yeah, quite sure. Did you work for Raymond? Hmm? Did you ever work for Raymond? No, uh, George. Uh, well, uh, your father helped Raymond quite a lot. Uh, way back in those early days, you know, he didn't have a steady job, I don't think. No, he didn't have a steady job, I don't think, until he worked for the 
down on the highway and in the sawmill over yeah, there. Gilbert in the mill, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I think he helped Raymond Hay quite a lot. Who was on the Bonnet place? Bonnet place to me when you were young. Uh, Uncle Roy, Hemingway. Okay, he was. He must have crammed several places. Then. Yeah, he was up uh, there where Freemans were. Yeah, the Whittemore place. Yeah. yeah. And he was up uh, at Clarence Young's. That's where he was born, brought up. That was the original Hemingway place. Yeah. yeah. And then he uh, came down to the one on the Freeman's there, and then back in 1930 he bought the place down next to Grimey's over there, the Bonnet place. Uh, that was the Hale place, Ed Hale, Abbey Hale. So did you ever work for your Uncle Roy? <laughs> or that fa you're just in the family probably if you did? Uh, he usually had a hired man. Just uh, up in the last years when he didn't, and I know one year uh, uh, Earl Fitchett and oh, uh, follow over to St. Johnsbury. He married one of the Fitchett girls, and uh, they did the hand down there. And then I know uh, for a few years there, my Aunt Mildred helped him quite a lot haying in. We'd go down and help him some hay and then. Uh, probably a lot like when I grew up. We'd just go from one farm to the other. Yeah. See who was still pitching yeah. hay. If anybody needed help, you wouldn't help them. Yeah. What about the hurricane of 1938? You remember that? Yeah. Mm. I uh, can you remember uh, the wind was blowing a little bit and. Uh, we uh, all went to bed that night and got up in the morning and went out and looked up the woods and it was all flat. Pine. A lot of pine down there. Yeah. Well, a lot of maples down too. We, of course, it wasn't too many maples up in here, but old Uncle Charlie, he lost half of his shoe place. So, yeah. No, uh, Wind didn't make it play any favorites. Did you harvest a lot of, by then you'd have been old enough to? Well, I was about in the eighth grade, seventh grade. Uh, uh, no, Fred Priest and Uncle Arthur cut up in there quite a lot. But no chainsaws, you know, it was all. All hand and axe, it's all an axe. <laughs> no, uh, of course, you didn't get much for your own though, because there was so much of it. <laughs> Everybody was flat. Were you ever involved in the service? No. It's Dave was the only one that was. Hmm? Dave was the only one that was in the. Yeah, yeah, you weren't in. But the Marines. Yeah. No, we were deferred for agriculture. So, what year did you start this house? Hmm? What year did you start this house? Well, were you still living in Whaley's when you did? No, 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 no. I was, uh, first we'd there. moved down with my folks. Okay. And uh, I came out and looked the place over the day my father died. Uh, that was 1953. So I was working on, and I just started working for Perina the fall before, and uh, uh, no, I was, I don't know, I can't remember, I, 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 it took me anywhere from five to fifteen years to do it. <laughs> probably longer than that, I don't think it was all finished like well, it is now. Probably not. Now. No, I had to work full time besides building my house. So. And from right where you are on was the addition? This yeah. Is, this is where the original house stopped, right? Right here. Uh, no, it didn't stop. 
but I'd probably walled it out because I didn't have it done. <laughs> no, I, uh, we, uh, I built the kitchen part on and roofed it over. And uh, we lived in that a couple of years. Well, there was fewer of the kids in the beginning, so. Well, uh, yeah, the, uh, we had them here, and we had them over to the next place. Uh, they would be over there, their grandmother or something. Yeah. And, you know, we we lived in the kitchen there for a couple of years. Uh, the kitchen and small bathroom on the end of it there. Yeah, um, the you want to tell us something about the kids? I know Mike was first. Yeah. And uh, <coughs> then we had a, a daughter. Uh, they were three of the kids were born down to East Gate on that place. Uh, Mike was the oldest. Then you had a daughter. No, I can't think of a name now. But she died at ten uh, or nine months. Darlene, yeah. No, she had uh, water on the brain. And Linda? Yeah, Linda was born down in East Rygate. Then there was Cheryl and uh, Frank and Bill. That was it. Yeah. I guess that was enough. <laughs> that was the household. Yeah. No, I work full time at Purina and part time on the house. And, you know, we we was a long time doing it. Did uh, you retire from Purina? I mean, did you worked at Purina till the end of your. No, they moved out. Yes, they moved out before, while you were still there. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah I've forgotten. No, I uh, worked from McLaren's there uh, for few years, and then they closed the doors. I was good at closing doors, I guess. No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I uh, can't remember what... No, I was working in town of Waterford when I retired. I worked for them for ten years. I had forgotten that, but I remember you were doing the plowing and yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. No, I worked ten years studying, and I worked probably another five or ten part time. So. You still see you out on the John Deere's once in a while. Yeah. <coughs> I don't know. Did you have anything else to do with the town of Waterford? Well, I was a. Uh, School director for four years. And you uh, were on the board when they had well, stuff the new school. Yeah. Uh, no, my father was a school director, and he died, and I got the bright idea of putting me <laughs> <laughs> So I think you and Lino were actually on together, brother and sister. Yeah, yeah, Lino was on. Who, who was the third one on the board when they had to dream up the new school? Well, uh, Avis Briggs and Mrs. Galanda were the ones that were thinking about that mostly. And uh, then uh, I was on it when we built it. And uh, I think I remember going up to Lunenburg with my mother and Liner and I don't know who all else. They had built a, a yeah. new modern school just prior to our doing it here in Waterford, and yeah. we were looking for ideas and how oh, yeah. it all went. And yeah. yeah, yeah, it was right up in uh, the village. Or yeah, we went up there and looked at it a few times. But you had some farming questions for George Donner. You got some farming questions <laughs> for not not that Fred was the farmer, but he's certainly been involved with farms all his life. Well, I was going to ask about, he's already answered, but about the, the years um, that they were um, 
living in Waterford in this area. It's been it was quite a few years then. Because if you were born here, yeah. and then your, uh, was it your father was around this area, where did he come from? Well, <coughs> my grandfather Bullock come from Lindenville. And uh, my grandmother Bullock was a Davis, and she was from Waterford. More Waterford? Uh, well, we, uh, they owned this farm oh. first, and uh, when my grandfather and grandmother moved from Lindenville to here, then a couple of years later they bought the place over where my son has a garage there over the next place. And uh, my grandfather was a band builder. He was a carpenter. Did you, did you learn your carpenter skills from him? Uh, well, <laughs> I was only about six months old when he died. Um. <laughs> and he was Fred? Yeah. No, uh, my grandfather came from Lindenville. He, uh, the schoolhouse up here to Gutnell burned. And so his father and uh, took the job building the new one. That was back in 1880. And uh, my grandfather was 16 years old then. And uh, I suppose that's how he met my grandmother. Uh, do you have a family history? Like, do you have documents and like, do you ever record your family history? You know, the, the grandparents and great grandparents, and see how uh, far back you got. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, probably, but. Uh, It all started with old Silas Davison. He uh, started uh, uh, the Baptist church down at the... Sumsec? Sumsec. But he lived up here in Waterford. He come up here from Rhode Island, I think. And... Uh, so we've got it from him on, and uh, how everybody's related. <laughs> Davison was a pretty popular name back in the late 1800s around this area. Yeah, well, my, my grandmother Bullock was a Davison, and uh, his, uh, her father was Henry Davison. That's his jail. And, uh, but he was a, he was a Baptist minister, old, uh, Silas Davison. And he would have been, I think, grandfather to my great-grandfather Davison. And then there was Claude, and Claude was grandfather to Stella Powers. I knew there was a connection there. And, uh, but there was, <coughs> Claude, he had Stella, my grandfather, Davison, he was the youngest one, and he had three daughters. And there for about four generations, there weren't any men. why the Davidson name is no longer, kind of like what's happened to the Morrison. No. no, no nobody to carry on the name. No, we, uh, <laughs> uh, no, uh, we've got it in the old family Bible back there for quite a ways. Old Silas had a lot of kids, but uh, I, don't, I don't think one wanted to open up. Back to the high school, at, at the time you were in Littleton, did they have a, a trades program as part of the high school? 
Uh, no, while it was with wood, woodworking. I mean, had a wood, woodworking shop. <coughs> yeah, I took woodworking for two years down there. They had a pretty good shop down at the bottom of the high school. So that's where you picked up your, your knowledge to build the house? <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> not really? <laughs> no, uh, no, you, you built a house, you... Uh, well, I tagged around after my father, and, and he built his, so that... No, it's... Uh, yeah, you, you just go ahead and do it. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you'd like to get from Fred? I was just wondering if you have any hobbies now. Not what you'd call a hobby. He was mostly cutting wood and, <laughs> and working. That's uh, no what, way. What do you like to do now? Well, I kind of like to sit out on the porch. And, uh, no, I've got my wood in down cellar this year. Or, and uh, it. Uh, no, I don't. My hobby if you'd call it a hobby, was working for Purina and building my house and all that stuff, cutting my own wood pile. And it uh, helped George some on the farm and he helped me some. And so I, uh, I can't say as I had any hobby. No, a building house hobby enough. Well, is there anything else you want to tell us about your life? Well, I don't know. I don't know if you could say we had any hobbies. But, uh, we usually had something to do. No, I built my house and I built a shop and shed up back. And then we did a lot of work on the house that we built for Linda. Uh, Bryant Fleming and fellow from North Danville put that part of the house up. And uh, my daughter, uh, well, we had the daughter and son in law that were killed in an accident. And uh, so uh, we had. Uh, little squabble with the other side of the family who was going to have the kids and all that stuff. And so it ended up my daughter Linda, of course she never has been married, uh, but she uh, took the kids and brought them out. Uh, she's a nurse and that's uh, how we happened to build on that part of the house. Uh, Brian Fleming and a fellow from North Danville put it out. And they had to leave and start another house, and I put the black paper on it and wired it, and uh, Linda started doing the insulating and all that stuff. So it was all kind of a company, <laughs> a family project. And then uh, Bryant came back and put in a kitchen for her, and the other fellow did the stairs, thankfully. I'm not the grand stairs. <laughs> well, they were open when I was here. No, as a kid. I mean, uh, they, uh, oh, well, these this stairs. Yeah, a lot. They same in my father's house. They were just wide open at first. Yeah. No risers. Yeah. No. Uh, I bought. I cut that birch tree up, my Uncle Charlie's. He brought it down. I had it sawed down. So that, them stairs are all yellow birch. Okay. Beautiful. You no, know, uh, the fellow from North Danville put up Linda's stairs, and uh, he did a good job. And I put in the bathroom, I guess, and some, and so we finally got it done. A group effort. Did you do any maple sugaring? Yeah, we uh, no no big no big business at all, but yeah, we we sugared uh, 
uh, Jerry did it some, and then uh, uh, Frank took it over, didn't he? Uh, Frank, you're Frank. Yeah. He did sugar for a while. Yeah. And uh, no, it was kind of a whoever had the time did it. You know, it's, uh, yeah, I know you helped Frank the years that he was doing yeah, it over there. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, uh, I think uh, Jerry and I did it for a few years before Frank took it over. Yeah. So I know it. Uh, we've always been busy, but it was a very exciting life. <laughs> no, we was always busy. You always had something to do. I don't know if there's much more of it. Yeah, you got an awful nice view off your deck. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, well, I want to thank you for your time, Fred. And uh, I've learned some things that I didn't know. I, but I was here for an awful lot of your life, minus 21 years, so. Well, I, probably a lot of it I forgot, too. <laughs> well, we thank you. Running. <laughs> we had an old uh, open Chevrolet, you know, back around 21 or 22. Uh, he stopped registering that in around 32. And uh, let's see, 32, I would have been about seven years old. You, know. you could have used it to ride yeah, to school, so but you, it wasn't running. Oh, anymore. yeah. But uh, no, back to the, the depression there. You uh, had very little money. No. I had to be lucky enough to be the oldest kid. Well, that means more responsibility, fellow. Yeah. Right Did you ever do what George was telling us about? He said he used to walk up there and kind of build a fire and get the water for the... The school, did you have oh, no. those duties before George did? No. Uh, I think your, uh, Robert did most of that. You mean in the schoolhouse? Right. Somebody had to yeah. kindle the fires and bring... Yeah, the Rob, big, the Robert Morrison did. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, uh, they were still burning wood when I graduated, I think. Raymond Morrison usually uh, uh, furnished the wood. Of course, you get paid for it, but I mean, he uh, he cut he the wood. He was closest by. Huh? He was closest by geographically. Yeah. yeah. And uh, no, it uh, right after we got out, I think it turned to oil.